may be surprising to some people, tobacco use is now and into the foreseeable future the single most destructive agent of death and disease in the world. People in North America and in Western countries aren't as aware of what is going on in the world about tobacco use. The tobacco epidemic is still rising in the major population centers of the world. There are over a billion people who smoke and use tobacco. About 80% of the tobacco use is in low and middle income countries. In the 20th century, this was an epidemic all about the high income countries with the high prevalences of use. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Tens of thousands of doctors in all branches of medicine. In all Smoking rates, for example, in the UK among males was upwards of three quarters. 75% of adult males were smokers. In Canada and I believe also in the United States, it was above 60% among males. In the 21st century, this is going to be a devastating epidemic, potentially, of low and middle income countries. Countries such as China, India, Bangladesh, other places in um, Asia, possibly in Africa, if prevalence rises. As a result of this, it is, I would think, even more important to consider ways in which tobacco use can be curbed. The tobacco epidemic is affecting every community in the world virtually, but some parts of those communities are more disadvantaged. In the Western countries, the most disadvantaged groups are the poor because they tend to smoke more and have more trouble giving up. People who are living in poverty are more likely to be distressed, they're more likely to have stress in their lives, they're more likely to be under financial stress, and these things make it more difficult. In developing countries, the cost of cigarettes can lead to increased rates of malnutrition among the families of smokers because people have so little income and tobacco consumption can take up a disproportionate amount of that. So it can cause suffering in all kinds of ways. In the short term and in the long term it ends up killing one in two of its long term users. So it is a terrible scourge on our society and we need to be doing more to get rid of it. So the nations of the world have gotten together in the form of the first ever health treaty because of the fact that the projections are, if things remain the same, in the growth of tobacco use throughout the world, about a billion people could die of tobacco use in the 21st century. One of the important aspects of the ITC project uh, is that we have been able to bring together so far 23 countries. Uh, working on the ITC project in each country, doing our surveys to evaluate the FCTC. This has brought together a whole community of a uh, wide-ranging um, set of disciplines and, and some are government, some are researchers, some are advocates across the 23 countries. People who are using research evidence from strong evaluation methods to get evidence that they can use to promote strong evidence-based policies to curb tobacco use. <laughs> My name's Simon Chapman. I'm Professor of Public Health at the University of Sydney. Tobacco, of course, is global globally number one public health problem in the world today. There's been a revolution in tobacco control in that we've had the Framework Convention of Tobacco Control. Um, this has just drawn together international action against tobacco uh, in a way that's never been seen before. 
Well, I've been working in tobacco control myself for, for 35 years. I don't think that it's, there is really any research project that's ever been mounted uh, in international tobacco control, which has made uh, the breadth and depth of contribution that the ITC program is making and it's really only just hitting its straps. I can't think of any other research project that comes remotely close to generating as much highly strategic and useful research that the ITC project is producing. Tobacco control isn't a single fix problem. It requires a whole range of different strategies. These range from a taxation regime where tobacco is heavily taxed through uh, to the implementation of smoke-free policies and the provision of smoking support services for those people who want to quit but are unable to do so unassisted. It includes things like strong controls on the tobacco industry, banning advertising and other forms of promotion of tobacco products. It involves strong messages to the community using the mass media and other channels to get the message through to smokers that smoking is harmful. These messages need to be graphic and show the harms as they are so smokers become emotionally engaged with the topic. They need to understand in their guts that smoking is harmful, not just in their heads. Health warnings on packs can also do this very effectively, particularly where you use graphic images of some of the diseases caused by smoking. The goal of all the work in tobacco control, ITC project or other projects that uh, we do is really to address the health problems that affect people on a daily basis. I work at a cancer center. I worked at Roswell Park for 30 years. I now work at a new cancer center. You still see the families coming in, you know, every day surrounded by their loved one who, you know, the fact of the matter is a third of all cancer is due to smoking. It really is a personal kind of thing. It's a personal failure on our part, really, not to have uh, addressed this problem 50 years ago. We're now approaching the 50th anniversary of the 1964 Surgeon General's Report on Smoking and Health. And uh, it's been 50 years, 20 million Americans have died. This is truly a world conference. The first world conference on tobacco and health held in 1967 in New York City uh, had a compelling uh, address by Robert Kennedy uh, where he talked about what we were up against in terms of the tobacco industry, the need to work in partnership across the globe to address the uh, problems related to tobacco. And he outlined the challenges of preventing a new generation from starting and assisting those who were uh, addicted to cigarettes to get off. Nothing's changed. We must be equal to the task, for the stakes involved are nothing less than the lives and the health of millions of people around the world. The 21st century is a critical time for the history of tobacco use. Because of the sheer magnitude of the tobacco epidemic, it is clearly the case that population level approaches need to be taken to curb tobacco use. The FCTC represents an extraordinary opportunity for this kind of population level approach to be taken to address the tobacco epidemic. It's going to take considerable collaboration in government, civil society, researchers to piece together the kinds of approaches that can move tobacco control forward and push tobacco use down throughout the world, especially in low and middle income countries. And my hope is that the ITC project can contribute in some ways to helping provide the kind of evidence that stronger tobacco control measures need to be taken and provide more foundation with respect to what works and what doesn't. We can all together do something about the number one preventable cause of death and disease in the world, that is tobacco.